Damaged Defenders by Sherazad. Chapter 74. Sam. Sam called his mom right after the interview. She was predictably thrilled that he'd be moving back into the city. She went so far as to call Sam's older brothers in Shanghai them into agreeing to help Sam move. Not that Sam had been about to fuss over having help. Hacking sucked. Sam didn't tell his mom what job he'd gotten, but she wasn't an idiot any more than he was. Less even, as all she'd known was he'd been tapped for an interview regarding a civilian counseling job. In this case, civilian, meaning not military, but not really civilians either. She put the pieces together and come up with the right answer all on her own. Now she seemed to be torn between pride that he'd gotten the job and worry that he'd join them in fighting. She'd worried about him when he'd been in the service. Okay, maybe worry was a little bit of an understatement. She knew how to stroke when she found out he'd gone into pararescue. She had also become his unit's mom and had sent everybody care packages weekly. Sam figured it would only be a matter of time before she started trying to mother the Avengers, which would be good for a laugh or three. He could pretty much guarantee that most of them wouldn't know how to handle Mama Wilson. Unfortunately, actually packing and moving would have to wait a week or so. According to Miss Potts, everyone was heading to Asgard the next day, and Sam was invited along. And like hell, he'd missed out on that. Seriously, he was not dumb. Getting to visit another planet, he was all over that. Fortunately, Stark had fully furnished and supplied guest suites, so Sam would be able to stay the night rather than having to stay over at his mom's again and battle traffic to get back to the tower in the morning. Of course, Sam was pleased to stay overnight for more than that reason. It gave him a chance to observe the Avengers and their support people. The situation was every bit as bad as Miss Potts had warned him it was. It was actually worse, but then Miss Potts had said she wasn't around everyone all the time, and most of them kept their problems to themselves. What fascinated Sam was that despite how bad off some of them were, most of the Avengers had at least one person they could trust and lean on for support. Stark had bots. The three S.H.I.E.L.D. agents were an almost impenetrably tight triad, which hadn't surprised Sam at all, given how long they'd apparently worked together as a spec ops team. Banner had Ross, the two kids had Logan, Loki had Thor, and obviously Barnes had Rogers, among other team-ups. Thor, Rogers, Logan, and LeBeau seemed to be the only ones who didn't have an obvious support system in place. What was really remarkable about the group was that while those four didn't have people they knew well, and that knew them well, who could act as support, most of the rest of the group was trying in various ways to fill that gap. Lewis had evidently settled on making sure everyone ate, whether they wanted to or not, which was a not inconsiderable bit of help since appetite was one of the first things affected by emotional upheaval. Most of this lot couldn't afford to skip even one meal thanks to enhanced metabolisms, which made making sure they ate that much more important. Most of the rest seemed to be offering a listening ear and or advice. Encouragingly, Rogers and Thor seemed to be mostly accepting of that help. LeBeau seemed to be one of the most stable of the group, and the one with the least problems going on, at least at the moment. Because of that, Sam was cautiously less worried about him than the others, at least for now. Thor and Rogers desperately needed a shoulder to lean on. Thor seemed okay, but given he was an alien, Sam was taking that with a grain of salt. Even if he truly was okay now, Loki was a mess, and Thor was acting as Loki's main support. Eventually, that was going to bleed all over Thor and create problems for him. Logan was going to be a tough nut to crack. According to Miss Potts, he was one of the amnesia cases, which meant he definitely had issues over not remembering his life at the very least. You'd never really know it by looking at the guy. Granted, Sam only had a day of seeing the guy in action, but it was pretty clear the guy would be reluctant to talk about his problems. The guy didn't talk much. Period. The best angle Sam could figure to get a foot in the door with Logan was helping the two teens. Logan was rather obviously protective of them, so helping them out might incline Logan to at least hear Sam out later on. The protectiveness wasn't without reason, Sam figured. The girl, Rogue, was crazy skittish. Given her mutation, a lot of the skittishness was even appropriate, but Sam had a feeling there was more to it than that. The boy, Pyro, 
Man, that kid was a mess. Pissed off at the world and untrusting in a way that spoke to one of those abusive and or neglectful childhoods that Miss Potts had warned him was a problem with most of the group. Rogers was a very obvious, very public wreck. Sam gave him points, all the points, for not being insane or curled up in a corner gibbering. Sam honestly didn't know how the man was as functional as he was, given what he was dealing with. That said, Sam planned to start with Rogers, as he was the one most obviously in critical need of a shoulder to lean on right now. Of course, Sam was going to play it off as helping Barnes. Sam was willing to bet a lot of money that as messed up as Rogers was, he would pretend otherwise and insist Barnes needed that help, not him. Which, to be fair, Barnes needed out bad. Worse even than Rogers. So Sam would be helping him too. He'd just be being sneaky about helping Rogers in the process. Barnes. Man, Sam didn't even know where to start with him. Right now, the guy literally had no will of his own that anyone could discern. He didn't speak at all and didn't move unless ordered to do so. Didn't do... Anything unless ordered to, actually. That, Sam at least had a few ideas how to tackle. Choice paralysis was fairly common in the mental health field for a variety of reasons, and the treatments for that gave Sam a starting point. The talking thing would actually be even easier to deal with if Barnes was amenable to other forms of communication. If it was just talking that was a no-no, they could teach him sign language or even use the tried-and-true paper-and-pen method. If communicating at all was a problem, well, that would be a lot harder to deal with, but it was something they could still figure out. The amnesia was going to be the big problem. Yes, Frigga had apparently said that Barnes would eventually remember. That was good news, but there were still problems. The first being just how long it'd take for Barnes to remember. Days? Weeks? Months? Frigga apparently believed it'd be on the days or weeks end of things, but she could be wrong. Even if she wasn't, would Barnes remember all at once, or would it come in dribs and drabs over days or weeks? Would Barnes remember everything, or would there be holes in his memories? Of greater concern was the whole winter soldier deal. Again, Frigga had assured that Barnes wouldn't snap into that mind frame and kill everyone. Which, thank God, because apparently Winter Soldier was the sort of badass who could potentially even take out Thor and Loki. Which, Sam had no desire, whatever, to have to deal with that coming at him. Thank you kindly. That said, once Barnes' memory was back, what was going to happen there? Would the poor bastard end up with what amounted to a split personality? And every time he tried to fight, he'd switch to the soldier frame of mind? Would that personality, for a given value of personality, disappear completely? Sam was concerned with that last one, mostly because he knew that once Barnes was even mostly himself, he'd be liable to pitch a fit about Rogers going into battle without him. Barnes had been watching Rogers back pretty much their whole lives, if history had it right. If Barnes flipped to soldier every time he picked up a gun or took a swing at someone, they'd have to figure out how to help him deal with that because Sam was willing to bet Barnes would refuse to retire as long as Rogers was fighting the good fight. Speaking of split personalities, Bruce seemed... okay-ish. And he at least had Betty, whom he obviously adored and trusted. Hulk, on the other hand, yikes. Sam had heard about the Bing Green monster from time to time in the various VAs he served as counselor at. None of the folks he'd worked with had ever seen Hulk in person, but military grunts were some of the worst gossips on the planet, so word got around. Sam had necessarily taken the stories with about a pound of salt. Meeting Hulk for the first time? Yeah, that was world-altering. He was going to have to get the full story from Banner when they got back to Earth. First judgment, though? Hulk rather reminded him of an abused little kid. A 12-foot tall, insanely strong kid who wasn't shy about fighting back, but a kid nonetheless. Sam had no idea how far Hulk would be able to advance, intelligence and awareness-wise, but the fact he could remember things from one appearance to the next was encouraging. 
They would at least not have to start at the very beginning every time they tried to work with him. Helping Hulk through whatever issues he had was going to be interesting, though, mostly due to his lack of understanding. There were not all that many ways to work with someone whose understanding was at the level Hulk's was at currently. Then there was Loki, who was alien, which would complicate helping him, since there was no guarantee that he'd respond the same way humans did to human therapy. The guy was near as much a mess as Rogers was. Not that Sam blamed him. What little Miss Potts had told him indicated the guy had been through the ringer. And kind of made Sam want to go find Odin and punch his teeth in. Because even without knowing all the details, Sam had the guy pegged as a great A jerk. Titanium plated. Adamantium maybe. Because it took a special level of jerkery to teach someone to hate their own people. Not to mention whatever else Odin had pulled on Loki. Sam had a bad feeling it'd take Loki longer to untangle the mess Odin had made of his head than Sam to be alive. And that was just the Odin is a jerk end of Loki's problems. The poor man had evidently been a POW to the thing. That it sent the Chitari to conquer Earth. Again, Sam didn't have all the details there, but if Thor's grumblings, the one time Thanos got brought up, were anything to go by, Loki's stint in that thing's glitches had it been fun. Also, Thanos was in for a world and a half of pain because Thor was rather pissed off at it. Not that Sam blamed him. All in all, Sam was very glad he had signed on. It'd be a challenge helping them, but Sam figured he had a better chance at succeeding than most. Also, he'd be asking about his wings when they got back to Earth. The situation with Thanos was definitely an all-hands-on-deck situation. They needed every gun and fighter they could beg, borrow, or steal. Sam knew himself well enough to know he'd never be able to sit on the sidelines and watch other people fight and die defending the planet, never mind the good old U.S. of A, and not jump in himself. Besides, he missed flying in the wing pack something fierce. It really didn't hurt that the Avengers and Associates were two of one good people. That's not, but good. It was pretty clear that even in the short time everyone had known each other, they'd started to form a very oddball family. And were surprisingly not at all shy about pulling even more people into their orbit. Sam had expected a lot of suspicion and reluctance to interact with him, given what he'd been hired for. A lot of people disliked mental health professionals for any of a number of reasons, and gave them short shrift, even outside of the office. The Avengers had just sort of folded him right into their crazy. Granted, they could have been opting to ignore his counseling cred in favor of assuming he was there only to join them as a fighter, but still. Spec Ops units weren't known for their open acceptance of new members, and that was essentially what the Avengers were. So either way, being treated as one of the gang, pretty much the moment he walked in the door, it meant a surprise. A nice surprise.